Hi, I'm Doug Stewart. Today I'm going to talk about some of the differences between agile software development and the more traditional waterfall software development. In the traditional approaches, planning is done very simplistically. However, the teams, when they go to implement, they need to work a little bit differently, and they need to work outside the plan if they're using traditional waterfall methods. In Agile, we simply plan for the way they're going to work, we fund for the way they're going to work, and we end up with a better solution at the end. Looking at the way that we plan a software project with traditional methods, we have a very simplistic model of phases that are around intermediate results that we're looking to achieve. So requirements, design, implementation, task, deploy, these are all activities internal. They, they don't provide value to the end user, but they provide value to the software team. And we map these out in sequence in a way that is very orderly and methodical and easy to assign work. What actually happens is that we deliver our requirements, we begin our design, and the design finds flaws in the requirements. And so what we have to do then is extend this period because we're thrashing, we're, we're going to scrap some of our requirements, work that we've done in the past, we're going to redo it, and we're going to publish again. And then we have something that maybe we're happy with and we can design from. What happens next then is because we were late with the requirements, now the design is going to naturally be late because we thought it would take so much time, and in fact what happens is it takes that much time, but we start later, so we finish later. But the same thing happens again. So we deliver late to implementation, so naturally they're going to be late, according to the plan, but then we have to rework some of the design because we haven't proven it yet. We haven't driven the risk out of it yet. And so we come back and work on that design a little bit more, which then causes us to be even later with the delivery of the software and so on through the phases. And, and as we like to say jokingly sometimes is that the testers then get a weekend in order to, to test the entire system. And of course this is not a good plan. So what we have done in iterative methods, and this actually started before Agile, and it's something that's been picked up by Agile, uh, and those that are practicing it in the various uh, methodologies associated with it, what we've done is start to plan for what's actually going to happen. So instead of planning to be finished with a business solution defined and identified, and then that's that and it's done, what we want to do instead is overlap these activities. So it defines the basic scope of the solution, design it, implement it, test it, verify it, prove it, have it accepted by the customer, and then repeat the process as many times as it takes in order to get the complete system. So instead of having phases like this, they're not realistic, and instead um, actually we end up with this red work, which is unplanned, it's also unfunded typically, <clears throat> so it's not in the budget. So this work here in this red causes us to be late, causes us to make mistakes in haste, so instead, what we do is we want to move some of these activities up earlier in the life cycle. And start doing some of them earlier so that we can drive the risk out of the system that we're building at a much earlier time. So instead of our phases being here, then what we're really looking at is a three-phased approach where we are still going to do some amount of pre-work. It may be almost nothing. It may be simply a business case. It may be a product backlog with a number of user stories. But whatever it is, we're going to do that before we really start implementing. And then instead of artificially having these major milestones, we're going to go right to our solution. We are going to do whatever we need to do in the middle here in order to produce that solution, which will be updating the business solution, updating the technical solution, updating our, our software, testing, verifying, and having it accepted by the customer. So in this three-phased approach, depending on the method that you're using, 
it may be called different things. So in Scrum, for instance, this is Sprint Zero. And these are sprints. some number of them, and then we move into more sprints if we need them for the activities after we've finished our solution but before the release is actually in the hands of the users. If you were to look at the discipline agile delivery approach, then this would be known as inception. This would be known as construction. And finally, transition. As the three phases. And the key milestones where we're looking for is initial scope of our system so we know what it is we're going to build and that we can get funding for it. We have a solution we're happy with. And then finally, we have a release that's in the hands and the user has been trained on it and any other activities that may need to be gone through, such as formal acceptance testing um, by the users. So pulling this all together allows us to really plan and fund and budget for the activities that we know are going to happen anyway. <clears throat> by starting some of them earlier, we actually do less of them because we don't have to scrap and rework as much of our work. And we end up with a product here at the end of our time, which is complete and has been verified by the user community. Now, the way Blueprint helps with this is to allow us to capture information as it's produced. So Blueprint is, is agnostic towards the actual process being used. So if all of the requirements information was, was done up front on a project, you could capture it in Blueprint and it'd be available then for your use. If it's done incrementally and in layers, then Blueprint can capture those layers, add them to the um, total solution. And as people are into construction, they can see all of the different elaborations of the requirements, UI mockups, and everything else that might be stored in Blueprint. So that gives us something at the end here that gives us a persistent representation of the system being built that's exactly the system that was built because the requirements information stored in Blueprint and other elaborating information such as storyboards and mockups and such has been created just before it's been implemented if you're using an Agile approach.